All right, guys, Sheree Glenn, Charlotte Football Insiders. And Matt Morrow, what is your take on East Mecklenburg versus Barry? All right, so East Mecklenburg, we are filming from the illustrious Freedom Park here in Charlotte. Uh, me and Charlotte Football Insiders, we're going to try to get out and see a little bit of Charlotte. <laughs> But uh, East Mac and Barry, interesting game here. So East Mac uh, coming off a loss last week to Archie Kill, 35-6. to six. Um, You know, getting on the board is obviously some improvement there. Um, I think defensively they still, you know, have some personnel that can do a good job, and they're going to need it this week against Barry, who won their first game over Hopewell, 29-13. So uh, congratulations to the Cardinals. Um, I think both of these teams feel like this is a game they can win. Uh, this game last year was a crazy shootout uh, when they played it at Waddell. And um, I believe East Met came out victorious in that one, but there was a lot of points scored and a lot of uh, passing yardage on both sides. So it wouldn't surprise me to see something similar to that uh, once again here, but I think it'll be a very competitive game. And um, whoever gets this win is going to go a long way uh, towards getting off to a very, very good start here on the season. All right. Tell me your thoughts on Garinger at West Mech. All right, Garinger West Mech. Um, of course, you saw Garinger last week. What did you think about them? Um, so, you know, they were playing Harding. Harding gave it to them last week. Yeah, and yeah, we saw the score. You know, yeah. What I saw, I felt like Garinger regressed a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, they have a lot of questions that they need to answer before this Friday mm -hmm. if they plan on, you know, even staying competitive with West Mech. Yeah. Now, first, you know, conversely, West Mech didn't have a high scoring game last week either. Well, we were there for that one, and I tell you, <laughs> no offensive touchdowns, only one score in the game, and that was a fumble recovery. And you can go look at our highlights, and you can see how that happened. But uh, seven nothing win uh, for West Mech. Coach Nick Mata's first victory on the season, first victory as a head coach in his career. Um, I agree with you. I think this is going to be a bit of an uphill battle for Garinger. Um, I think West Mech. Um, it's very obviously very strong on defense. They really fly to the ball well. Um, they tackle well in space. Uh, those are, are some things Garinger's going to have to figure out. How are they going to move the ball consistently? Um, I think West Mech will, you know, show some improvement on offense this week, uh, getting back more into a routine. Last week was their first game. Um, they'll go back and practice, work on some things, and um, I think you'll see a better offensive game uh, from the Hawks this week. Um, so Harding and West Charlotte. All right, man. Oh, oh. I'll actually be at this game. Yeah, Cherie will be at this game, and you're going to be at a good game. Uh, traditional rivalry. Uh, this was a huge game back in the uh, you know 80s and uh, 90s with the huge crowds and the battle of the bands and everything. Um, it's bit, it's changed a little bit. I was talking to some uh, Harding people uh, recently, and they said. You know, we used to go to the games to see the bands. Now we're going to see the team. Wow. <laughs> so what were your impressions of Harding last week? Um, so I thought that Harding did a great job last week. I thought that they, um, on both sides of the ball, you know, showed a lot. You know, last year, um, if you remember, uh, they had a different coach they yep. had um, yep. than they do now. Mm -hmm. And so I think that he's done a great job, Coach Van Smith, oh, yeah. with you know improving them. And I think that you're going to see a, t a different Harding team than you did last year. Yep. So I'm looking forward to that. And I totally agree with all that. Uh, from what I saw with West Charlotte last week at a, against West Mac, another very good defense. Uh, some guys really stood out, especially middle linebacker Benari Black, number three, uh, all over the field making plays. Um, you know, the biggest challenge, I think, for West Charlotte in this game is offense. You know, obviously they didn't score last week against West Mech. Um, you know, Harding is averaging over 60 points a game um, against, you know, their first two opponents. So they obviously have the ability to score. So if West Mech's going to, you know, win the game, they obviously got to find some offense. And um, also defensively contain Harding's playmakers in space because that's the biggest thing. When you see, you know, the carry of Skittles Thompson, Malik Faust and um, you know Jared Robinson throwing the ball really well. Um, you got to find a way to uh, get those guys to the ground. When you get in the one-on-one -on -one situations, making tackles. Um, you know West Charlotte's going to lean on Iwan Jackson in the running game, and uh, I think quarterback Silas Cruz will, will bounce back and um, you know have a better game this week as well. So it's going to be a really good game, and I hope the crowds show up like you used to and make it a really good environment because those kids deserve it. All right, tell me about Huff at Burns. All right, so Huff uh, getting into All right, discussing the Huff-Burns game. We're going to talk a little bit about Huff here and some players that um, 
I think are really standouts for them. Of course, you got Darius Ocean, quarterback, dual threat kid, uh, formerly played at Cleveland High School last year, uh, left-handed quarterback, um, really elusive, uh, making moves in the pocket, getting out of the pocket, thrown on the run, uh, can obviously run for first downs and touchdowns, has good awareness, able to slide and protect his body uh, really well, throws with uh, pinpoint accuracy when he has time to uh, look downfield at his targets. Of course, you got Evan Pryor, uh, five-star running back, uh, very talented, got offers all over the place. Those two are going to make that offense go, and some very talented receivers on the outside. I was very impressed with um, when I saw them against Butler, their ability to separate and uh, make plays down the field. Of course, defensively, a very, very uh, talented uh, back end. Um, Mario Love Jr. is a very good corner. Uh, Storm and Rowe at my line, uh, linebacker is a very good player as well. And then, of course, Neil, the big D tackle everyone's talking about. A very talented team going down to take on Burns. Tell me about Hunter Huss at Vance. All right, this is the CFI game of the week. Um, very excited about this one. Uh, two uh, schools that you know I really love that we visited in the preseason. Uh, for Hunter Huss, they got their first win last week, 7-3 over Rocky River. I think that's a really good win for that program. Uh, Coach Jamar McCoy, we talked to him in the preseason. You know, he's got a bit of a younger group, but they got some talent and they're going to fight. They're very scrappy. A 7-3 win, that's what that shows right there. Um, you know, looking at Vance, they got their first win last week, a big win, 35-7 on the road against Heritage in Virginia, uh, Lynchburg, Virginia. Um, I think it's three, level three state champs, whatever mm -hmm. they call like it up there. State yeah, three A. Okay. Um, you know, Vance really showed some offensive talent. Um, quarterback Austin Greer throwing for over 400 yards and uh, several touchdown passes. That's, those highlights are on our Facebook page, so check those out. Um, you know, keys in this one, uh, we're going to talk about it a lot on the website this week, um, but, but just a real early glance. Obviously, Hunter Huss is going to have to limit Vance's big playability on the offensive side of the ball. Um, and then Hunter Huss on offense. You got to find a way to move the ball against that advanced defense. Very tough to do so. Um, the best way to do it, um, you're just gonna have to. It's gonna have to be in short chunks. You're gonna have to take what they give you, which is not very much, you know. In all honesty, uh, for Vance, kind of like what we said with Huff. You know, you know, throwing the ball for that many yards. You know, you're gonna open yourself up to turnovers. Make sure you don't turn the football over. Make sure you protect well. Even though Austin Greer has some. Credibility can get out the uh, pocket and make some really good throws on the run. Um, defensively, um, you know, with Hunter Huss, they got Dontavious Nash, very dynamic player, a uh, player we're going to feature uh, this week in a player focus article. Um, he plays both sides of the ball. He can play some safety, he can play some receiver. Um, obviously, you got to know where he is at all times. They may even put a little double team on if he's split out wide or if he's in the slot, you know, you can combo cover him with a linebacker and a safety or however they want to do it. A lot of different ways. They have the athletes to match up with that, so make someone else beat you. All right, talk to me about independence at a minute. All right, so this is a really good game. Really good game right here. Um, independence is 2-0. and And it's, it's a quiet 2-0 because some people, I think, have kind of forgotten about them over on the east side of Mint Hill. But uh, this team has a lot of talent. Um, just seeing the way they've won their first two games. Um, you know, against North Mac, they're able to run the ball very well. Uh, and then last week against South Met, they got the passing game going, um, putting up a lot of points in both of those games. So obviously the challenge for Olympic is how do you slow down the independence offense? Um, first and foremost, you got to find a way to get pressure. Good thing is Olympic has a good defensive line that can get pre uh, pressure, led by Marquise Fleming, big defensive end, uh, second in the conference last year in sacks. Uh, look at the other side. Olympic ran the ball for a ton of yards uh, last week in their victory over North Mac, their first win of the season. How does Independence stop the running game? Very good question. That's going to be a big challenge. Olympic has that big offensive line. Uh, Torres Shelley Simpkins, uh, Tavian Ford, those guys did a great job last week for running for a lot of yards. Cameron Smith was the benefit of that. Uh, really good running back, kind of under the radar, junior, very talented player. Uh, this has a makings of another high scoring game. I think both of these offenses have strengths that can give the defenses that they face trouble. Uh, so that's going to be a fun game to watch over there. I'm really interested to see who pulls that out. That's going to be a really, really good game. All right. 
talk to me about Mallard Creek and Rocky River. All right, so Mallard Creek um, defeated Butler. Big game last week. They won 33-17. Uh, going on the road to take on Rocky River, who lost, uh, as we said earlier, to Hunter Huss, 7-3. Um, Mallard Creek, you know, they played well in spots last week, but they weren't totally happy with that victory over Butler. Um, they're they're kind of hungry to get back at it this week, uh, trying to work on fine-tuning some things on both sides of the ball. Um, I think with Rocky River, Rocky River has the athletes um, to hang with Mallard Creek um, for a half. And that's, that's the kind of thing we always talk about uh, with a Mallard Creek or with the Independence in their heyday. Um, can you play four quarters? Uh, that's going to be the big challenge. Does Rocky River have enough depth to hang in there? Because I think they have, you know, some some guys that can make some plays and, um, you know, make it a game for a little bit of a while. Um, but, you know, that, that's the first challenge. Then the second challenge, you know, obviously offensively only put up three points last week. Where do they find the offensive improvement against a team uh, that's probably another, you know, two steps higher than the one they faced last week? All right. Next, we have Marvin Ridge at R.G. Kale. All right, so our big game guy, Michael McCarver, is going to be at this one most likely. <laughs> uh, this is another traditional rivalry down in the uh, southeastern part of Mecklenburg County. Of course, you got the Mecklenburg Union County line. Uh, these two schools are very close to each other, and they've you know, played for several years. Um, Marvin Ridge, I watched a little bit on them today uh, from our buddy Tim Winters uh, at Union County Football. Does a great job covering Union County. Uh, Coach Aubrey Carter's been there for several years. Um, he was former offensive coordinator at Lake Norman when they were going deep in the playoffs and making runs in the 4A uh, bracket. So, very well coached team. Sully McDermott, quarterback, uh, junior, good looking kid. Um, the biggest thing that they talked about was their offense. They're going to be balanced, they're going to be 50 50 whenever they can. Uh, you look at Archie Kill, um, obviously, when you play a team like that, you want to find a way to stop one thing and make it one dimensional and then, you know, try to shut down that one dimension. So, first and foremost, like most defensive coordinators, they got to stop them. Uh, make Marvin Ridge one dimensional, then their pass rushers can kind of get after him. They got a guy, uh, Casey Seegers, outside linebacker, um, rushes the pass really well, was all conference last year as a sophomore. Look for him to be a key in this game. Uh, looking at Archie Kell, they got the first win last week, like we said earlier, over East Mech. Um, offense did a good job, got it up to 35 points. Um, Jared Joseph, quarterback, dual threat guy, um, obviously a big key in this one. Um, both of these schools know each other real well. I know it's going to be a great environment down there at Archie Kell. Um, I think it's going to be a close game. I think both of these teams are about a similar level. Um, it's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's a good litmus test to see where these teams are um, early in the season. Next, we have Providence at Myers Park. All right, so another traditional rival. You know, these two schools are pretty close together. A lot of these kids grew up together. Um, and Myers Park, as we see, they're going to they're gonna come. <laughs> they have probably the best uh, environment in Charlotte as far as uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg schools go, as far as uh, student support, fan participation, you know, all those things. On the field, um, Providence did have some success uh, with the run game against Huff last week. So. First and foremost, Myers Park's going to have to shut that down, uh, make Providence throw the football. And the other part of that is on offense, you put the pressure on them by jumping up early. I think Myers Park obviously has the ammunition to do so. Providence is going to have to try to weather the storm early on, keep it close, make it a game, uh, try to get to the fourth quarter within one or two scores, and then put the pressure on Myers Park to perform. Because most people are going to look at this and say, okay, Myers Park is going to wipe, you know, walk the dog with Providence. And, um, you know, if you're Providence, you can embrace that underdog mentality, go in there and, um, you know, eager to pull an upset. Uh, Myers Park, you got to try to knock them out early. Um, you let them hang around, it's going to be a dog fight because Providence is scrappy. They're going to fight uh, for Coach Moore to be the head coach. I, I can guarantee you that. Um, <laughs> talk to me about North Mech at West Forsyth. All right, North Mech. Ooh, man, I tell you, um, not backing away from uh, – playing some, some tough teams. West Forsyth, I think, has probably one of their better teams in a long time up in the Winston-Salem area. Uh, they're going on the road to play them. Um, last week had a tough game against Olympic. They had trouble stopping the run in that game. West Forsyth's going to give you that same thing. They got a real dynamic playmaker up there, whereas number one, um, expect him to get the ball a lot, you know, inside run game, little uh, flare screens, things like that. Um, you got to know where he is at all times to shut him down. Um, 
first and foremost, because if you don't, it's going to be a, a really long night. Um, North Mick, they got, uh, I think they got seven points last week off a kick return from uh, DeCon Bobo Stewart, their star wide receiver. Um, obviously, they got to find a way to generate a little more offense to uh, stay in this game. Uh, the good thing is, you know, a team like West Forsyth, just going off of my previous knowledge of them, you know what's coming. Um, the thing is, are you good enough to stop them? So that's the good thing. I think North Mac will be able to put together a good scheme. They got a really uh, smart coach and staff that does a good job. Um, it's just going to be up to them to be able to make the plays once they're put in position to make them. Uh, West Forsyth, very good team. Uh, Corn fed boys. <laughs> those are some good boys. And they work hard in the weight room too up there with uh, Coach Snow. I guarantee you that. Um, they're going to have a good crowd there. Uh, they'll be excited to um, you know have a good home game up in their area. And, Anytime a team outside of Charlotte gets a chance to play a Charlotte team, they're extra motivated because the rest of the team wants to beat Charlotte whenever they can. So there's some added motivation there for West Forsyth. All right. Talk to me about Weddington at South Mech. <laughs> All right. So uh, Weddington, obviously very talented team down in Union County. Coach Capone doing an awesome job. Uh, they beat Porter Ridge last week, uh, another one of their Union County rivals. Um, I think it was about two or, two or three touchdowns, um, and that was a, uh, a kind of a litmus test for them because Porter Ridge is well coached as well. Um, going into this game against South Mech, um, obviously South Mech's struggling a little bit right now. Um, had another tough loss last week to Independence. Um, you know, everyone kind of knows, you know, going into this year, it's a lot of program building with Coach Evans. He's trying to instill, you know, his um, beliefs and, you know, the way he wants his kids to fight and play every Friday night. Um, and he's going out and playing the best. <laughs> and Weddington, two-time state champs. Um, you know, when you go through stuff like this, it prepares you for conference play. Um, we already know in that conference, it's kind of wide open right now for uh, you know anyone in that league. So, you know, South Mets going to continue to fight. They're going to continue to try to execute the schemes put in place by uh, Coach Evans and his coaching staff. If you're Weddington, um, they're working in a new quarterback. You might see them try to throw the football a little bit, work on some different things that they um, – have struggled with in their first couple of games, even though they've won. As a coach, you always want to improve in some areas. Um, but if you look at it on paper, most people are going to pick Weddington to uh, win this game hands down. So kind of like we, what we said earlier, embrace the uh, uh, underdog role and uh, you know, go in there and try to pull an upset and shock the world. Watch us this week and every week on Charlotte Football Insiders. Yep.